So if not, we are going to move toward the next example. <clears throat> the next example is a biological example of a protein called rubridoxin. Rubridoxin is a protein where there is a one iron center and it is tetrahedrally ligated with four sulfurs coming from cysteine groups. So that is actually a part of a protein where it has four sulfurs coming from cysteine side chains and this cysteine creates a binding pocket for this iron. And over there, the iron can go between two oxidation states, iron plus three to iron plus two. It is one of the most basic iron sulfur cluster proteins. It is the most simplest iron sulfur cluster proteins. And it is widely used in biology for electron transfer. And generally, these proteins transfer electron one electron at a time. That means this whole system can transfer one electron at a time. So some electron comes over here from outside. It gives the electron to someone else and it goes from iron three to two first step. Next step, it goes to iron two to three back again. So it shuttles between iron three to two. So it is very much important to understand us that what is the oxidation state of this reproduction proteins inside the biology so that we can understand in which direction the electron is moving and what are the different experiments or reactions these rubidoxin proteins are participating. So as we just said, this iron can have two different oxidation states. Iron 3, the oxidized state. Iron 2, the reduced state. And our goal is to find out, can we predict how the system will look like for the MOS perspective. Now, what is the coordination geometry over here, Iron? Tetrahedral. Previously, we are talking about only the octahedral. So it is a tetrahedral system. So E at the bottom, T2 at the top. Iron 3 is a D5 system. And this is all bound with sulfurs, and sulfurs are pi donors. So they are all going to be high spin systems. It is very rarely you see a tetrahedral geometry, a low spin system. So five electrons, so one, two, three, four, five. So now looking into this system, D5 system, are you going to expect any valence contribution? Because it is a E2, T2, 3 system. So it is not going to show any valence contribution. And lattice contribution, it is tetrahedral geometry. Tetrahedral geometry is not as symmetric as it is for an octahedral or square planar or spherical. So lattice contribution will be there for tetrahedral coordination geometry. So lattice contribution will be present, valence contribution will be absent. So what will be happening? So let's write down the delta value of iron 3. and compare that with iron plus two system. So iron three versus iron two. So iron three has a delta value around 0.32 millimeter per second. Okay, so these are all in the unit of millimeter per second. And delta EQ value around 0.5 millimeter per second. Now, if I reduce this system to iron two, what do I expect? What I'm going to expect is the following. Is a D6 high spin system. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I have a asymmetry over here. So I'm going to see some balance contribution in this case. Lattice contribution is anyways present over here. So what do I expect if I go to iron plus three to plus two? I am reducing the oxidation state. That means I am increasing the D electron density. That means I am going to increase the shielding effect. The D orbitals is going to hamper the interaction between the 3s 
orbital and the nucleus, the AC electron density will be less inside the nucleus compared to the Rm3. Psi 0 square will be less. It is multiplied with the negative term of delta R by R. So it is going to move towards the positive side. And that exactly what happens. It moves to 0.7 millimeter per second. So you can see the positive shift over here. What happens to delta EQ? Previously, there is no valence contribution, but only lattice. Now both valence and lattice contribution will be active. So the splitting should be higher. And that exactly what we found. It goes to higher value. 3.25. So it clearly shows that totally different system for rubridoxin between iron 3 and iron 2. So if I want to plot that together for rubridoxin, what we are going to get? So say I am putting iron 3 in red and iron 2 in blue, what do I expect? In the same graph, if I want to put series percentage of transmittance, it is velocity millimeter per second. So for iron 3, what do you expect? 0.32 low splitting. So it is going to be somewhere in the more negative side. So first draw a line, this should be 0.32. And what is the splitting? 0.5. So either side 0.25. So I should see a signal like this. So this will be 0.57 and this is another point uh, uh, 0.25 so it will be 0 0.07. So you can see the difference is 0.5 delta EQ and the average value is 0 0.3. Now what happens to iron 2? Iron 2 is going to show a value of 0 0.7, the delta value. Splitting is 3.25. So 0 0.7 is going to be the average somewhere around here. And 3.25, let's say 3.2, so 1.6 on either side. So this is 0 0.7, so 1.6 on either side. So what will be happening? 1.6 plus 1.7 is how much? 2.3. So 1 will be around 2.3. And the other will be 1.6 on the other side. So it will be around minus 0 0.9. So it will be far negative. Something like this. So I have not drawn it properly in the scale. But if we draw it properly, the average will be around 0 0.7. The difference will be 3.5. 25 millimeter per second. So you can clearly see how different the signal will be. Not only the average value will be shifting with respect to the reduction, but also the splitting will also be increasing. So by that you can easily see what is the oxidation state of the iron in the redox. Next, we'll take an example of another ions of a cluster where there are two ions which are bridged by inorganic sulfides like this kind of diamond geometry. So it is known as the Fe2S2 cluster. And the rest of the iron coordination sites are filled up by protein bound cystinyl sulfurs. So this is the core and that is why it is known as Fe2S2 cluster or Fe2S2 ferredoxin in short form FTS. And over there, there are two centers over there and we found in the oxidation side, it is iron 3, iron 3 in reduced condition, it is iron 3, iron 2. So it doesn't go to all the possible oxidation state. This ferredoxin can still transfer electron one at a time. And the oxidation state, it shuttles between, is plus three, plus three in the oxidized state to plus three, plus two in the reduced state. Now the question is how the delta and delta EQ value looks like. We have already discussed how the values will differ. It is very much similar to the 
rubidoxin. So I read plus three, plus three, it shows 0.27 and delta EQ value 0.6. And over there, both iron shows similar value, nothing else. So it clearly shows how good the interaction is happening between this iron through this bridging sulfur. So they are quite well balanced with respect to the electronic distribution. So that is why we are seeing only one kind of iron. What happens when we reduce? Now it is one iron, three, one iron, two. So we see two different signals. Iron three, one, is coming around 0.35, iron 2 come around 0.65. So they are differing in the delta values. 0.35 belongs to iron 3, 0.65 belongs to iron 2. Again, higher oxidation state means to the negative side, lower oxidation state means to the higher side. Delta EQ value, it remains 0.6 corresponding to the peak at 0.35 and this peak 0.65 it goes to 2.7, very similar to what we have discussed in the earlier system. So iron 2 split it further because it now have both valence and lattice contribution, whereas in iron 3 case, it is only the lattice contribution. So that is why you can see the difference. So what do you expect in the preliminary system? You expect only one kind of signal. In the oxidized state, in the reduced state, you will see two sets of signals like this, which clearly distinguish between the oxidation states of the iron in this complex proteins, which are very difficult to understand in other experiments. And MOSBAR is very critical because in MOSBAR only iron is active, all the other systems are actually blank or doesn't contribute to the signal. So it is very easy to do that with respect to the MOSFET spectroscopy. Okay. That is how it is going to look like for this Fe2S2 fade oxygen. So one more example we'll take, and that is the example of three iron four sulfur cluster or three iron four sulfur fade oxygen. What is the structure of three iron four sulfur fade oxygen? It looks like a tube and alternatively you have iron and inorganic sulfurs bound over there. Okay. And one of them actually doesn't have an iron over here. So over here a iron is actually missing. Otherwise, it will be a complete 4 iron 4 sulfur cluster. So over here, it is a 3 iron 4 sulfur cluster. One of the iron is missing. And over there, you can see the irons are still missing some of the coordination geometry, which are actually filled up again by the cystinyl sulfurs. And through this cystinyl sulfur bonding, this cluster is covalently connected with a protein. And this system also transfer electrons and what it has been found that the oxidation state it is iron 3 iron 3 iron 3 so what is the delta value expect very similar compared to the previous one 0.27 delta eq value is going to be 0.63 right now what will be the reduction state Reduction state is going to be one electron reduction. So you expect it will be iron 3, iron 3, iron 2. Now over here, what do we expect? In iron 3, iron 3, iron 3, it is very straightforward. You see one signal at a time. Now what happens if it goes to iron 3, iron 3, iron 2? So you are going to see a signal belongs to iron 3 and one signal belongs to iron 2. And what should be the ratio? The ratio should be 2 is to 1. Two signal belongs to iron 3, one signal belongs to iron 2. And iron 2 is going to be on the positive side and should be further splitted. And iron 3 should be on the negative side and less splitted. So the data we are expecting is the following. 
that iron 2 will be more pleated and iron 3 will be less pleated but almost twice in size that is how the signal it should look like right with respect to the 2 is to 1 ratio we are expecting or now let me show you how the signal actually looks like or let me do it over here how the signal actually looks like So that is how the iron 2 iron 3 system comes out. The top one is actually the iron 3, iron 3, iron 3. One signal, only one splitting, so that is fine. The rest of them should be two signals. So we see two signals over here. Over here, we see for this one two signals. But in the opposite way, we expected the middle one should be higher in intensity because that should belong to 3 and the side ones should be lower in intensity that belongs to iron 2. But over here, see, it is actually kind of opposite. The outside one is actually higher intensity than the middle one. So instead of 2 is to 1, it is showing something 1 is to 2. How I can explain it? But at the same time, I am taking only one electron. That can be explained because it is actually not forming iron 3, iron 3, iron 2. It is actually going through a mixed valence system. One iron 3 and one iron 2 actually in, interacts between them. And it forms iron 2.5, iron 2.5 by interaction between this iron 3 iron 2 it creates two iron 2.5 system the other one remains iron 3 now you can imagine a iron 3 will be remaining in one equivalent iron 2.5 is two equivalent iron 3 is higher oxidation state so it is going to have a value delta value to the negative side 2.5 is going to have a value on the positive side 0.46 and also look into the value 0.46 previously we found the values around 0.65 or 0.7 for the iron 2 and for iron 3 it is around 0.27 or 0.3 and this is giving me a value in between around 0.45 so it is also showing from the value, it is not 3, not 2, it is somewhere in between, so it is iron 2.5. And it also affects a similar way to the delta EQ. It goes to 0.52 and 1.47. And that is why instead of this particular signal, we saw that signal in the different way. So the outside ones are actually higher in number middle one is actually lower in intensity and we get a 2 is to 1 value like that. Okay, So this one equivalent is belongs to iron 3 and this two equivalent belongs to iron 2.5. So this is actually a very unique example of Mosbar spectroscopy. So it not only give you the exact oxidation state, it also shows that mixed valency, which is very difficult to understand from other spectroscopic in general. But it clearly and significantly differentiate with respect to the other states and give you an idea what is actually happening over here. Okay. Now, the next example. Next example is an example where most of you have gone through. It is about the hemoglobin. We already know in a hemoglobin, there is an iron system binds with a porphyrin generated in plus 2 oxidation state connected with a histidine like this very loosely connected to a water molecule which is we know as a deoxy form before it binds to the oxygen and once the oxygen comes over here it binds to that oxygen and it comes to this porphyrin ring plane before that, 
it lies a little bit lower side than the porphyrin inhibitor. And this one, it is suggested it is an iron 2 high spin system. And there's a lot of controversy. What is the oxidation state? What is the spin state of this oxy form? Now let's take a look if Mosbus spectroscopy can resolve what is happening here. So we take the Mosbus spectroscopy of the deoxy and oxyform. The delta value is found for the deoxyform is 0.89 millimeter per second. The delta EQ, it is fine around 2.23 millimeter per second. So that is fine. It belongs to a iron to high spin system. So that is what this value is here. So that is why it is so much highly shift positive, positively shifted delta isomer shift value because of the oxidation state, also the spin state. In the oxy state, once they measured it, they found the delta value shifted to very low value, 0.23 millimeter per second. And delta EQ value is 2.12. So what is happening? So first of all, what is this huge shift, positive to negative side? So it shifts. It actually belongs to both the change in the oxidation state and the spin state. So over here, the suggestion was that it is actually going from iron to high spin in the ox deoxy form to iron three low spin in the oxy form. So the low spin, if it is happening, it will shrink down a little bit the overall iron center and it will fit in the porphyrin ring. So it is actually favoring that. And not only that, it is going to iron three state. And that is why the change of oxidation state, change of spin state, and that is why that much of shift because it is removing the d-electron density. Now, whether it is a low spin or iron plus three, it is also supported by this delta EQ value. You can see the delta EQ value is not shifted that much. Why? Because previously we are saying it is actually a high spin system, a D6 high spin system. And that is why we are creating not only lattice contribution, but also valence contribution over there. It is going to give you valence contribution and also lattice contribution, obviously, because of asymmetric coordination. And if it also goes to a low spin system, and iron plus three state, then it is also going to contribute valence contribution and also lattice contribution over here. And that is why both of them are going to have very similar delta EQ value. So the delta value changes, isomer shift, but the delta EQ value remains almost same. And it can be explained if it remains in iron three low spin value. So if it is becoming iron three low spin from iron to low spin, that means someone has to take one electron out. Who is taking that electron? So the only possibility is that this oxygen is taking one electron and becoming a superoxide ion. So if it forms a superoxide ion or not, how we can prove? So people have drawn resonance Raman spectroscopy and try to find out what is the splitting, uh, the stretching frequency of the oxygen-oxygen bond in this system. And they found it is around 1100 centimeter inverse, which actually falls in the range of superoxide. If it is peroxide, it is around 850 centimeter inverse. If it is oxygen, it is 1500. So it is 1100, which shows it is superoxide. So with the help of the MOSPAR and resonance Ramans, it has been almost univocally find out that in the hemoglobin, when the oxyform is formed, it is actually an iron three low spin system and oxygen is remaining in the superoxide form. So there is an electron exchange between them. However, the electron exchange is quite reversible. That's why once the hemoglobin comes to the cell, it interacts with the myoglobin. The myoglobin binds the oxygen and the hemoglobin of the iron readily gets the electron back from the oxygen, the superoxide ion, and release the oxygen and it goes back to iron two state. So Mosbus spectroscopy was a huge help to find out that really you can figure it out what is actually happening in the 
hemoglobin during the oxygen interaction. 